Hello guys, this is your boy Ali Salanki and today we will be talking about the roadmap to coding from a beginner to an expert. Before I start this video, I want to thank all of you guys for those amazing birthday wishes. It really made my day. Now let's get back to the video. So in this video, I'll be talking about how I started coding and the entire roadmap for it. I'll be linking all of the sources that I mentioned in this video in the description box below. So you can check it out as well. Also, this video is for everyone. No matter which college or branch you're from, I'll be covering everything from the basics. Even if you have no experience in coding, this roadmap will help you a lot. Majorly when it comes to coding or programming, you need to know about your end goal. What do you want to be doing after you learn how to code? Vaguely, there are three categories. The developers building the applications, the competitive programmers and the machine learning part as well. I'll be talking all about it in detail. So watch this video till the end to get a clear cut idea about what you want to pursue. Let's first talk about competitive programming. Competitive programming is where you write your codes and programs to solve a particular question and compete with others as well. This is especially useful for building your logic when it comes to coding. It also utilizes your knowledge about various data structures and algorithms. If you don't know anything about data structures and algorithms, don't worry about it. We'll be covering that as well. Now, before we talk about the how, let's talk about why to pursue it. It is especially useful if you want to get placed in top MNCs like Google, Facebook or any other top companies. And as I said, it utilizes your knowledge about data structures and algorithms, which is especially useful for your technical interviews. Also, these competitive programming websites are closely monitored by the top companies in order to hire fresh talent. So now that you have a general idea about why to pursue it, let's talk about how to start with it. Before starting, I'd recommend you to choose one programming language and stick to it. You can choose any language from C++, Java and Python. Generally, Python is the easiest of the programming languages and is quite beginner friendly. But I'll still suggest that you go with C++. This is because it dives right into the basics. Once you choose your language, then go over to Hacker Earth or Geeks for Geeks. These are very beginner friendly websites and you can start learning right away. So even if you don't know anything about coding, these websites will help you right from the basics and that too for free. Once you get a knack about your chosen programming language, then you can start competing on other competitive programming websites like Codechef and Codeforces. Now let's talk about the next category of people and these are the developers. Developers are people who work on various different projects. These projects range from making a mobile application, a website and many more. All of these projects that you'll be making as a developer will go right in your CV. The roadmap to advance as a developer differs quite significantly from a competitive programmer. Many a times a competitive programmer working on a particular language would not be able to develop an application based on it and vice versa. If you ask a developer to do competitive programming and he hasn't done it yet, then chances are that he would have to struggle a lot with it. This is because even though the programming language might be the same, the packages, the libraries, along with the frameworks differ significantly. So thinking that you will start developing mobile apps if you do Java in a competitive programming environment is not true at all. Apart from knowing the basic logic, competitive programming will take you no further in the road to become a developer. That is why you would need a completely different path in order to become a developer. Depending on what kind of a developer you want to be, you can learn about those tech stacks in detail. Let's say you want to be a mobile app developer and even in that you want to be an Android developer. In that case, you can start with learning the basics of Java or Kotlin and also start learning Android Studio. Or you can also learn Flutter. Similarly, if you want to be a website developer, and more specifically a front-end developer, then you would have to start learning with HTML, CSS, JavaScript and also React or Angular based on your choice. Okay, those were quite a lot of things to learn. But where do you actually start learning them from? You can search it through YouTube, but especially if you're a beginner, I'd not recommend that to you. This is because YouTube is a place where you will find all the content, but it will be in a scattered format. It will take a lot of your time in order to truly understand what the chronology behind those videos are. 
So instead, you can learn from courses on Udemy and Coursera. These are some of the best websites that you can learn anything from. I personally learned a lot through Udemy. Once you're done with the basics, then you can switch over to YouTube in order to solve some of your doubts. But while starting out, the sequence in which to watch those videos is especially important and that you won't find on YouTube. Rather, you would have to look it up on Udemy or Coursera. For me, I started with competitive programming in the beginning. I did all of my practice, all of my competitions through CodeChef itself. Its practice problems are a must solve for everyone. See if you're comfortable with them and only then start participating in various competitions held on that side. Along with this, I was also learning about Android Studio and Flutter for mobile app development. I also had a basic knowledge about web development and made quite a lot of websites through it. Currently, I'm making mobile applications through Flutter, including my most recent work. You can check it out through the link down in the description box below. It's currently live on Play Store. Now, let's finally talk about machine learning. Machine learning is quite extensive and really depends on what you want to learn because there are a ton of different things that you can do through machine learning. That's why having a single roadmap for it is just not possible. If you don't want to get into the research part of machine learning, then I would definitely recommend you to first go over the developer's roadmap, be it mobile app development or even web development. The reason I'm saying this is because once you start with machine learning, then you can integrate and use these models in your applications as well. Also, a big shout out to Love Babbar. He has made an entire roadmap for machine learning. You can check it out. It's a 30 minute long video. It's very well put and covers almost everything. I personally have just touched the basics of machine learning and haven't really dived into it much. So I won't be going deep into it in this video. Now that you know more about what you want to do and have a general idea about its roadmap, Let's also talk about some of the important things that you cannot afford to miss in college, especially if you want to start to code. The first major thing is hackathons. For those of you who don't know what hackathons are, hackathons are basically these events in which you solve a particular problem statement in the stipulated time frame. It's usually a 24 to 48 hour long competition. In this, you make an application which solves the given problem statement. My first ever hackathon was in my first year itself. At that time, I only knew a bit about Django, it's for web development and the basics of Android Studio. So trust me, even if you're a total beginner, just try to participate in as many hackathons as possible. The organizers of such hackathons are generally very friendly and will also help you solve your doubts. Another important thing about hackathons is that you get to network with others. Building a strong network is very important in your college life. The next thing is internships. No matter how good you get in coding, in the end, it will always be about how readable your code is to another person. You would need to work in a team at one time or another. In such a case, the readability of the code is much more important than even the speed of the code. To understand what I'm talking about, look at these two scenarios. Even though the code in the first scenario might be faster, it practically is useless if it is non-readable to another person. That is why it becomes extremely important to follow a set of rules in order to write your code. Now, why did I talk so much about this topic? This is because while taking part in internships, you would need to follow such rules and you will get a hang of it. The next thing that you cannot miss is contributing to open source projects. Now, this is especially for the developers. Many people would have gotten the idea of open source through GSOC, that is the Google Summer of Code, but let me explain it in brief. Open source contributions are contributions made to an open source software. So what is an open source software then? It basically means that its code is available to the general public. You can change it, you can modify it and also send your suggestions to the developers for publishing. Some of the open source softwares are VLC Media Player, Firefox and even Python is an open source project. Now open source contributions might be sounding like a very huge process and very difficult one. But trust me, it is way too easy. But before you do that, just make sure that you learn about Git and GitHub. It will be used extensively for open source projects. So where do you learn about it? It's not that hard and you can learn it through YouTube itself. 
I'll be linking down some of the links down in the description box below so you can check them out as well. If you're wondering where you can start with open source, I will be dedicating an entire video for open source contributions and also for GSOC. So like this video, share it with your friends and also press the bell icon so that you get notified for my next upload. They are coming out with their own MHTCT batches for 2021. The amazing part about it is that you can enroll for the test, attempt it live and also win prizes and scholarships for it as well. In an academy, there are more than 30 plus top educators, 350 plus courses, 2000 plus lessons and many more added every day. So if you haven't yet subscribed to an academy, do that now.